Hi, I'm JJ Barnes, and this is Jonathan McKinney. Hello. And you're watching another episode of Writing Advice with JJ and Jonathan. So, today we are going to be talking specifically about writing dialogue. And we're talking about it as a writer not as somebody who's recreating actual life because that is a different art form okay essentially what we're saying is when you write dialogue you you are drawn to writing it as naturally as possible because then it reads naturally and you won't boot your audience out you don't want them saying peculiar things that humans don't naturally say and it doesn't roll off the tongue because right. then your audience doesn't like it okay. or your actor sounds weird when they're saying it however it is still has to be written and crafted. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually sound like real speech because you don't say, um, uh, uh, you know, you might put that in, but you normally wouldn't. And also there is a way of constructing dialogue in a scene where you might bookend it, you might thread narrative triplets, you might do foreshadowing in the speech, which humans don't naturally do because we are not planning what we're going to say to each other next week Correct. that can hark back to this. We might do it naturally just because of our own natural chemistry and you bounce back and forth, yeah. but generally your speech in human life is not as constructed as you need to make it in your writing. I absolutely agree, for a start. Um, so, explore that for me a little. Okay, um, so um, we love The Office, the US version. Yes. That is written to mirror life. So okay. it does not have the same constructed scenes in terms of dialogue and speech as, for instance, The West Wing. No. The West Wing, West Wing the dialogue in that is carefully written and constructed to bounce, to be very fast, to deliver information to have the mirroring and the book ending it is very carefully scripted the u.s office is attempting to actually mirror real life and yes it's obviously um a a hyper version and it's a parody of life yeah but it does not have the same carefully constructed in mirrored it's still very well done and that's why we love it right but it's a different art form so if you want to recreate real life that is one thing, but you're not doing that in your script or your book. Well, you might be if you're writing The Office then. If you're doing that particular art form. Right. I'm talking about so, drama and things like that. Um, when it comes to a novel, I would argue that, and again, it, it can be wildly different. Um, and some, some scenes will be quite natural to how people talk. Um, and some scenes won't. They'll be, they will be composed, uh, they will be structured like a piece of music moving through phases. Exactly. Um, it's a really nice way of putting it, actually. But the, I suppose the wildest, most unreal form of, of dialogue or monologue in any kind of fiction is a musical. Because yeah. literally never, like, I mean, we might have a conversation that, that naturally occurs like a scene from The West Wing by accident, where we do kind of start... Oh, you're making us sound far more intelligent than we are. <laughs> Maybe, but yeah. not just... The, but like, something that's... It, we might have a conversation that could have been written... Yeah. ...with an intention of, like, starting on a on a, on a a theme or a beat or a note or a, a whatever. And then, yeah, we refer to it in the middle of the conversation, then we refer to it at the end of the conversation, and by the end, the, the third reference of it demonstrates how our perspectives have either changed mm. to become more far apart or come closer together. That might happen yeah. by accident. But it wouldn't be, we wouldn't start the conversation thinking, we will do this. Well, we wouldn't sing it, is the point. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to start singing our conversation. And then it rhymes. Like, that is obviously a very constructed, unreal form of communication. High fantasy was will also be very... <laughs> because from whence we came <laughs> right right people don't actually speak like that but for the context of the world that these characters are in it works because so, you accept that it's not so in game of thrones they're not calling each other wankers or <laughs> um you know they're not they're not they're not saying Can you imagine john snow you wanker you know nothing john snow put the kettle on you know you know you won't get that 
But that's... Robert Baratheon is the closest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't do an impression, but the. Um... Oh god, this dog's an idiot. So yeah, in a musical, that's obviously incredibly, wildly unnatural. You can't write a novel that's also a musical. I suppose the closest you could get is like a Poetry. Dr. Seuss yeah. sort of um, rhyming prose thing, which again, grown-ups probably wouldn't read. They might read it to their kids, but yeah. you wouldn't really do a novel like that. I mean, uh, yes, Shakespeare was yeah. a rhyming writer. So yeah, if your novel, you might feel... I think this is a difficult one to find out what my own personal advice to you is because I think when you're reading a novel, yes, you should apply the, the constructed, um, you should learn the craft of yeah. constructing scenes via dialogue to entertain your reader just in and of themselves so that the writing itself is satisfying to read. Oh. But it can't, well, I mean it can, I suppose if you're very good at it, then you could write the whole thing. So every scene of dialogue is played in this... Theatrical way. Quite theatrical way, you could do that. If you need to, to ground the energy a little bit and have people thinking as they're talking, for example, so they don't always know exactly what they're gonna say. But the thing is, I think if you don't construct it, if you do just let them talk as we deal, you can, we, I mean, for instance, I'm, terrible for this okay. where I will lose what I'm saying mid-sentence and then just kind of yeah I've never written that wing it as I go and be like it's a shame when good like bad things happen to good sentences because I'll, I'll my mind will have drifted off onto one of the other millions of things I'm thinking about and then I'm like not really sure what I set out to say here but I'm just gonna say whatever crap comes into my head yeah, you won't write I... that because you'll lose your audience no one will know what you're doing and like I get away with it because you love me and have to put up with it but in your in my readers would not <laughs> I don't think any uh, anybody who's watching this anybody who's writing is going to have characters forget what they were gonna no, say no but the point is people do point. you are not <coughs> trying to recreate life and that exactly. doesn't happen in the office either yeah because I again it is written mm, true. Um, so yeah, there, there is a degree of realness that you... I, I think it's almost impossible to write. If you're writing characters who are like, they're starting out because they want in this scene to make this point or to accomplish this thing and then midway through they forget about it and go back to looking at Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's the point. You're a bad writer. That's the point, you you're not, you're not um, actually recreating exactly how people speak because then it would do that. Like, oh, I can't remember what I was saying, I'm gonna go back on my phone again. Right. Like, you don't, you you write it, even if you're trying to mirror the way people speak to a certain extent, yeah. you're still not actually mirroring the way people speak. No. And, and I suppose you can let go of that idea if you hold on to it. Yeah, if you're worried about writing the way people speak, stop, yeah. because you, you don't want to do that, because yeah. we speak bollocks. That, that might be a... Um, that might be the sort of criticism that gets levelled at, at fiction from people who haven't written very much. Yeah. Like, of the, course the way they sounds. talk was totally unbelievable. It's like... Well, yeah. Yes. Because fiction, where characters talk in a way that's like the way that we talk, even if this was written, yes. this conversation we're having... For instance, I am blogging our videos because a lot of people can't watch them or, you know, can't hear or whatever, so they want the information written down. So I'm blogging these videos and believe me, when you actually take it apart each sentence, what we say, sometimes the message is just lost in translation, but because when we listen to people speak in this way, you kind of naturally, your brain just follows that train. Yeah. But when you're seeing it written down, you can't because it doesn't go that way. Yeah. So for some people, I guess, the magic of storytelling is that you trick them into thinking that what they're reading or watching could actually be said and communicated in that way in real life um, which is I think some people who don't like musicals specifically because people don't actually burst into song to communicate the thing they want in real life at least never have that I've known that is off-putting for some people they, they, they don't like it they like their their fiction to mirror real life more than that yeah, but then if they actually, but, as you say, if it was actually mirroring real life properly, they wouldn't like it. They wouldn't like it anymore. They'd be like, I don't understand what's going on in this garbage show. So you have to kind of, if you're trying Find to the snare balance. those readers, those people who reject the, the musical, shall we say, 
because of how composed it clearly is. Um, if those people who think of themselves as sensible people, who don't like all of that nonsense or whatever, <laughs> if that's your target, then your job is to trick them into thinking yes. that what they're reading could happen. <laughs> um, right? Yeah, exactly. And this is just a, a secret between us, because <laughs> they're kind of stupid if they think it could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? But, God bless them, because they're out there. Um, yeah. You're trying to convince them that your very carefully constructed scene where you've analysed every word in that scene could just flow out of someone naturally and people actually speak that well. Yeah. Um, Hello, Mom. Molly, I'd rather you didn't. Thank you very much. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching our video about writing dialogue and mirroring real life or not mirroring real life as it is. Right. Um, if you have any examples of dialogue that you feel does genuinely mirror real life but still works, I, th I think we'll be able to say why it doesn't. Yeah. Either it doesn't work or doesn't mirror real life. But tell us below because I'm interested. Because I bet there are examples that people can give and we can have a look at it and be like, I mean, well, actually... Improvised movies, fiction, TV Oh shows. yeah, to be fair, um, improv. Might, but even then... It's improvised by actors who are very skilled and used to reading scenes. Yeah, yeah. I think of like, whose line is it anyway? Which is obviously an improvised, an improvisation concept yeah. show. Um, obviously that's not pretending to be fiction per se, but I used to watch that and wonder how they were capable of coming up with stuff like that. Yeah. So even that is 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 even improvised. Um, it's still improvised to perform. The thing that's remarkable is that I couldn't do it. That the that we yeah. that we have a feeling of we are. It's like watching a, a very skillful musician. Like part of the enjoyment is I couldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. Because if so I spoke, it's still not real life. When I improvise, I I just speak. When they improvise, they perform. It's, yeah, and they, they know they, they can rely on the practiced craft of their own, I suppose. Mm. So, yeah, it's still not mirroring real life. So yeah. The Office, Spinal Tap. Spinal Tap's a good example. They, they are dressed to look like real life, but they don't. And The Office, of course, The Office doesn't look like real life. Yeah. Um, like part of the charm, I think, is like, oh, that's like something that happened in my job. But most of the time, your job is not as funny and interesting yeah. <laughs> as The Office. I promise you. So, you know that already. I'm done. I won't say any more. <laughs> Let's uh, send us home. Um, yeah, so comment below if you have any things that you'd like us to look at as examples. And you can also find us on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm Judy Ann Rose, and he's John Muck. And we're always talking to people over there in the writing community, so check it out. And, um... Also have a look at our film that's coming out which is called Hollowhood because we have not tried to mirror real life enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have not. The dialogue is much more um, unnatural in terms of how well constructed but I still think natural in the sense that they do like call each other a wanker. Or a twat. Or a twat. Yeah. Because we're classy writers. Yes we are. So thank you very much for watching and we're back again soon with some more writing advice. Bye. Bye.